How's that CD system sound? Great. It sounds great. It really Perfect. does. Well, welcome to Shade Tree Mechanic. You know, literally thousands of vehicles and millions of dollars worth of merchandise are stolen every day. But well, one way to discourage that theft is with a vehicle security system. Today we're going to show you everything from a simple siren that you can install right here on your vehicle all the way up to one using sophisticated cellular technology. You know, we just got through installing this top-of-the-line CD unit with amplifiers and speakers. You know, we've got hundreds of dollars worth of gear. It's just inviting theft, and we'd be crazy not to have some kind of protection. Also, no one wants to go to a dark car at night and not have to be able to put the lights on or something like that. You want some protection. We're going to show you some systems with some convenient features you'll really like. What we have here is a vast array of security systems, but one of the simplest that you can use is nothing more than this simple little switch. You can buy this at about any hardware store. What you do is you splice it in to your primary ignition wiring. You hide the switch under the dashboard. When you get out of the car, just flip the switch. That'll shut off the ignition. Even if you try to start it with a key, it won't start. Now, this will discourage a lot of would-be thieves. A sophisticated thief, he'll find this in a heartbeat. He'll bypass it and be on his way. Another item that you can use is a fake coil wire. Now what this does is it doesn't pass any electricity. You pull out your coil wire, you put in your fake coil wire, this way the car won't start. The disadvantage of this, of course, is you have to open the hood, put it in there, then when you get ready to drive your car, then you've got to do the same procedure in reverse. So this is a little inconvenient, but it does work. It's one of my favorites right here. Oh, this one. I like this. This is by Code Alarm. This is nothing more than a fake keypad. What it does is it's got a sticky back on the back. You mount it on your dashboard. When you get out of the car, flip the switch, the little lights will flash, makes a would-be thief think that you have a sophisticated security system on board. That's and it also it. comes complete with a decal so that uh, if they're walking by the street and they see this car and they see that, hopefully they'll pass on, go and rob somebody else's car. I've got something right here and this is some more security. Let me show you how it works. This is a pretty convenient to use and highly visible deterrent. Goes right over your steering wheel. You lock it in there like that, and you push your button in, you got your steering wheel locked. Again, it's very visible, the car can't be driven. Now here's another item that you can use. This is really for GMs, this is a steering column lock. Right. Collar. The General Motors cars are very vulnerable on the steering column, and because they're made of pot metal. This is a hardened stainless steel collar, you put it on, and again, it'll make it very hard to steal. Now if you've got accessories outside your vehicle, like a spare tire, and you want to keep it in place, you may want to try a spare tire lock. This will help foil some thieves. Also, if you've got aluminum wheels or expensive wheels, you may want to consider wheel locks. Now these will take the place, each one will take the place of a lug nut, and it comes with a special key to lock it on there. Again, this will help uh, foil some would-be thieves. But if you're dealing with sophisticated thieves, you've got to attack them with sophisticated means. That's right. What we've got here is a alarm system made by Code Alarm that's very sophisticated. It's upscale, got a control module, and you can add different modules and different convenience groups to it. And based on the looks of this uh, basic wiring harness, it's not for the do-it-yourselfer. This is sold to professional installers. Well, speaking of do-it-yourselfers, we do have one for the do-it-yourselfer. This is a, a simple device from Code Alarm that's designed for your car, and it has some options that you can add to it. But well, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to show you how to install this in your car. So stay with us. There's a system layout. Okay, Real good. Real pretty simple. A car is stolen every 19 seconds in the U.S. Welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. Looks like you got your hands full. I sure do. You know, I showed you the simplest security system. That's this switch. Now I'm going to show you the ultimate. This is called the Code Alarm Intercept System. And this is a three-part system. Here's the way it works. You've got a security system here, a cellular phone, and a Loran C navigational system. Now here's what happens. If the security system is breached by a, a thief, then a signal is sent to a monitoring station from the Loran C. The monitoring station then will call up the thief on the cellular phone, ask for the code. If the code isn't given, then they call the cops. So they can track a thief within 200 feet anywhere in the country. This is the ultimate in security systems. But this isn't what we're going to show you today. What do we got, Sam? Today we're going to install the Ains 75. It's a do-it-yourself alarm system. And it's, again, designed and aimed exclusively at the do-it-yourselfer. And it comes, of course, with your owner's manual, 
but they're the only ones in the industry right now that come with a video, an instructional video. You want to read the owner's manual and look at the video, and of course that'll help you install it. It comes with two remote transmitters that go on your keychain, and the alarm system itself is pretty neat. Self-contained, here's your siren and horn, and uh, your unit itself, and of course you get the wiring harnesses to install it with. Now what you want to do is locate inside the vehicle, under the hood, a good solid metal panel, and it uh, looks like we're going to use the uh, inner fender panel right here to mount this thing because that's a good solid structure and has nothing behind it. Yeah, and they also have an instructional booklet. And to make life easier when you're mounting these units is you pull out the instructional booklet and look inside here and there should be a, uh, yeah, here it is, Great. right here. There's a template so you can drill your holes. Makes it a lot easier to do. Cut that off on me. We'll just put that right here. Okay, I'm going to put my template right here. Now, put your template in place, then you drill your holes according to the template. Now, before you drill your holes, look behind the metal panel you selected. Make sure you're not going to drill anything on the other side. Then we mount the bracket and the horn to the fender panel using the three screws and uh, star washers supplied. Okay, now that our horn and bracket are mounted, next thing is our wiring harness. And the wiring harness has a plug on it that matches the plug on the back of the horn. And of course it's keyed so you can't put it together backwards. Once that's secure, the next move is to put our ground wire in, okay? And the ground wire, of course, has a ring terminal on it. And what we want to do is mount it to a good body ground, but not to the horn bracket. So we're going to find a place up here. This is a good ground. We're going to take a little sandpaper, and we're going to try to get this down to a little bit of metal here. So we have a good electrical contact. And then we're going to drill a hole right here and use one of the screws supplied. Okay, next we've got our red power supply wires. And of course, we had to put a little extender on to reach all the way over there. Here you go, Dave. Push right. that right through. Got it. Yep. All right. And we're going to follow the original harness all the way over. Give me some of those tie wraps, will you, Dave? Yeah. All right. Now I got enough over here. Here you go. Okay. Thanks. There we go. All right. Now we got it over, over here on this side. This is the fuse holder. So we'll be putting a fuse in here. And we're going to put a connector on here and hook it right here to the, the uh, battery side of the relay. Now we've got our battery disconnected. Now the connectors or the uh, little terminal end comes right here in your bag of parts. We'll just slide this on and we'll crimp it on. You want to make sure you crimp it on properly and get it on there just right. Okay, I don't know, we're all set. All right, now all we'll do is just hook it up here. Take that nut off. Hook it in, tighten this back up, and we'll put in our fuse. You all hooked up over there? We're all set here. Let me have the fuse. Great. Got these all loomed up here. Okay. Okay. The system comes complete with two uh, uh, remotes, and these remotes will work up to 50 feet away, and they've got over 4 billion codes, so they can't be duplicated, and it's used to arm and disarm it. Okay, I got the fuse hooked up. Let me hook up the battery. Okay. Now the system is uh, arming itself. Now to test this thing, we're going to have to disarm, disarm it, right? So right. we push number one, and, and now it's disarmed. Right, one chirp. So we push number one again, and it should arm itself. That's right. It's so armed. now it's armed. Okay. Now to do the panic alarm, and this is a new feature for personal protection, you just push both buttons at the same time, right? and we'll disarm it. Great. So it works fine. Good test. Okay, we've got some extra wires hanging off here. and These wires are for different accessories and options that, we, that come with this alarm. We can you know, hook it up so the uh, parking lights flash when the alarm rings, or several other options that we're going to get into right after this. You know, one of the interesting things about these little remotes is that you can program the sensitivity of the system 
right with these. So that makes it pretty handy. Well, we've got a lot more things we're going to hook up with our security system. We're going to take a short break. Stay with us. This works really nice. You know what? Four out of five car thefts occur when the owner leaves the car unlocked. Okay, Sam, you poked that wire through there. Okay. Well, hello and welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. Well, one of the features on our security system is that it has a starter interrupt circuit. And we're going to run the rest of our wires back through the firewall here to hook that circuit up. Now, when you run wires through a firewall, see if you can find a grommet. And there's a lot of them in there. There's a lot of places where other wires and tubing is passed through. Utilize one of those before you start to drill a hole. If you have to drill a hole through the firewall, then make sure that you put a grommet in it before you put your wires through. Otherwise, you can chafe the wires and cause a short, which could be a problem. Okay, Sam, you got your wire through? Oh, here it is. You got it? Okay, let me pull it back. Pull it back just a little bit. Okay. All right, let me get down here to the end of the wires. I'll hook them up here. I'll just take a little bit of tape, wrap it around here, or if you want, you can put a hook on your wire. It doesn't take much to do it. And we'll just pull it off. And we'll feed these back through. Okay, go ahead, Sam. I'm guiding it. Come on. Just pull her through. Okay. Okay, we here we go. Yep, go ahead. Pull it on through. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm pulling through this wire harness that we fed through the grommet in the firewall so we can get access everything we need from our alarm system. Next, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to disconnect this key buzzer wire so when I turn the key on, it doesn't bother me. I'm going to cut this tie wrap right here. I've located the ignition switch by pulling the panels down underneath the steering column. I've got to all the wires coming out of the ignition switch. I've got to find, with a test light or a voltmeter, the wire that gets live when you turn the key to the start position. So I've got my voltmeter turned on, and I've got this hooked up. I think it's this red wire right here, but I'm not sure. Okay, we've got no voltage there. You're going to push ahead. down the clutch pedal? Yep. Ready? Twist it. That's it. Okay, one more time. Let's try this one more time. Okay, go ahead. That's it. Okay, it is. It's the red signal wire going out there. So we know we've got to cut this wire, and we've got a wire harness supplied with our starter interlock system, or with the alarm system, for the starter interrupt. And what we're going to do is cut this wire and splice it in according to the directions. Okay. The first thing, I'm going to take this red and white wire, and I'm going to cut this right here. Okay. So we can Make sure you have enough room there. Oh, yeah, I've got plenty right here. Okay, good. All right, now, what goes to the key side? All right, the key side, according to the directions, the yellow and black wire off your harness there goes to the key side, the okay. starter wire. Okay. Uh, right. I'm going to need a pair of strippers for this. Okay. Here, I'll get you It's good. Nice yeah, it looks tight good. Now. Yeah. Well, you know, we're so used to soldering wires and using hinge trick around here, but, you know, you get uh, butt connectors with this kit. It makes it really easy to do it. And to use a butt connector is pretty simple. Just take your wire, strip it back a little bit, twist it nice and put your butt connector right on it, okay? And then you take your crimping tool, you insert it in your crimping tool, and you give it a good squeeze, okay? And that makes a good tight connection. Again, it makes it fast and easy, won't have any trouble. Now Great we're ready for to folks at home to do that. That's right. Now we're ready to test. Close your door. All right, let's give her a shot. Okay. Now I take our remote, two trips, and I got the, it's armed. Let's see what happens. Great, it won't start. Well, nothing works, so that means it's working. Got this. We followed that wire into guy well, diagram, good. Thing, good. Yeah, because you okay. need to follow the instruction. That's all right. This. And there's the alarm. Okay. Uh, I disarm it. You get four chirps. It tells you that when you disarm your alarm, that somebody tried to tamp with your vehicle it should start now. There wow. we go. All right. Okay, all I've got left to do now is to uh, tighten up these wires, dress this down underneath here. That's the way it's supposed to work. Here, you need a tie wrap here? Yeah, give me a couple okay, of those tie Okay, one other thing, too, is we've got to put our warning light on our dash. That's right. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is mount our dash warning light. Now, you want to mount it in a position where it's easily seen from the outside. When you arm your system, this thing will flash. That way, it'll warn any would-be thief, move on by. Now we're going to mount it right down here in our speaker panel where it's easy. That way we can run the wires straight on down into our wiring harness. All right, now we got our, our uh, warning light here mounted in our grill. Let's see if we can get that set up. There we go. Now we've got our wires down through here. All we have to do is take our orange wire and hook it to our gray wire and our black wire will hook it to a chassis ground. Oh, 
Well, now you can see how easy it is to install the Code Alarm Auto Security System. You just follow the instructions, it's a piece of cake. You know, let's give it a full-blown test. Good idea. Let me see. We push number one here. Okay, now it's armed. There's a little light flashing. Yeah, you can even see the light flashing in there. You right. know, in many states, you can get a discount on your insurance if you have an auto security system installed. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, with the system armed, Let's I should be able to happen. open the door and sound the alarm. There you go. It's working fine. Okay, okay now i got to disarm it. There it goes. Four trips tell you when you disarm it that somebody's uh, touched it or whatever. Also, in the uh, owner's manual, it's got a neat little section here on setting the sensitivity of the shock sensor and using the remote to do that. Well, that's a handy item because if you're going to a parking lot somewhere and somebody would accidentally bump your car while they're parking, you don't want to have the system go off every time so you can set the sensitivity so that won't happen. That makes sense. Okay, the other thing you get with the alarm system is a little sticker to put on the window and that, of course, will warn a thief. You put it right here and it says that this is protected by a code alarm security system perhaps warn off a thief. It's a good idea. That's great. Well, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about new products, so stay with us. You know, what we ought to do is check this. What state has the highest number of motor vehicle thefts in the U.S.? Answer, California, followed by New York. Wyoming has the least. Well, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. What you got there, Dave? Well, I've got a unique device called Auto Vault. You know, sometimes you might want to leave some valuables in your car, like your billfold, credit cards, watch, or in some cases, like the new uh, front uh, mount on your radios, you know, the security radios. Sure, it's detachable. You don't want to carry it with you. Well, you can put it in your Auto Vault. Now, here's the way it works. It's a heavy steel gauge box. Let me see. Let me unlock it here. Take the front off of it. Now, you can put your valuables inside, put this back together, lock it up and then are secure. You can mount this under the seat or in the trunk. This is made by Bon Air Industries out of Long Beach, California. It costs about $50, but this is a good item. I like yeah, it. Real handy. Now, what do you got there? That looks interesting. I've got a new, uh, it is inter interesting. I've got a new self-defense spray by Tero. And this is made by Alpino uh, uh, Corporation out of Lamont, Illinois. And, you know, we've all seen these sprays, but what makes this one unique is it's a pepper base, okay, and it won't do any permanent damage but it can uh, stop the attacker up to 12 feet away. Okay, it's got a good gas spray, and of course, uh, it's got a UV dye, an orange dye in it, which when you spray the attacker, will, will paint their face so the, uh, you know, the police can identify them, and of course, they can arrest them. Now, what makes this a little bit more unique than all the products we've seen in the past that you have in your glove compartment or you stuff it in your purse, is this bottle comes with a Velcro strip stuck right on it, okay? And then, of course, you get a Velcro strip in the package. And what you do is you adhere this inside your car, you stick this on it, and this thing is handy sitting right there in the car. You pop the door open, and you go ahead and rip it right off, and you've got it handy to spray the attacker. And they also make it, this is about $12.95, by the way, they also make it in a keychain version, and uh, you can put it right on your key ring. So it's pretty neat stuff. That says here it'll even stop vicious dogs and bears. Now, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun I don't think I want to go bear hunting with that. Really? What you got there? Well, I've got another item here. If you, uh, run a, if you have a car cover or a tailgate net or even a uh, hood bra, Sometimes people like those better than you do, and they like to walk off with them. Well, this device will help prevent that. This is called ProLock. You mount one end to your vehicle, mount this end to your vehicle, then you just run this steel cable through your uh, cover, push it inside, and that's all there is to it. Then you can lock your uh, car cover on your car. That's real neat. This I got one other thing I want to show the people here. Okay. This is made by Pickup Truck Industries out of Orange, California. Costs about $12. Available at any retailer. Now here's something I picked up, Dave. It's a neat charger. Now, Sam, we've done battery chargers before, but what makes that unique? Okay, what makes this so neat is this is the power charger by Innova Electronics. It's a 15-volt charger. You can start a car that's got a dead battery without opening the hood. You just plug this in the cigarette lighter, turn on your switch. It's a power pack. will charge the car's battery in about 30 minutes, and you can get it started. Another unique feature, you can slide your power pack or your chargeable battery from your cellular phone onto this, and it'll charge that. It has a whole bunch of options. You can get an AC-DC adapter. Is this one of the options that goes with it? Yeah, here's an adapter. This is a little uh, trouble light, roadside emergency light. You can plug it right in, and it'll power this up and prevent you from getting run over in an emergency. That's a nice-looking piece. It's a good little piece. It really is. Well, we hope you've learned something about installing a security system. The code alarm system we use costs less than $100, and as you can see, it was really fairly simple to install. That system was really neat. But, you know, Dave showed you the intercept system, 
And you know, the technology in that is unbelievable. I mean, they can track the car with the Loran C navigation system. They can interrupt the ignition system. The technology is really incredible. I think that's the ultimate system. I like that. Really? Well, that's about all the time we have for today. Until next time, so long from Shade Tree Mechanic. Bye-bye. Let's go play some golf. You're on. Get your got, sticks Got there. my clubs right here. For a copy of today's Shade Tree Mechanic, call 1-800-456-0063 or write to the address on your screen. Refer to the offer number shown. The cost of the tape is $15.95 plus $3.50 shipping and handling.